Welcome to Life Science Today, your source for stories, insights, and trends across the life science industry. I'm your host, Dr. Noah Goodson. This week, we take a break from the stories of raising capital, mergers, and FDA approvals to look at the dark side of our industry. What happens when companies fail, people lie, and good drugs make bad lives? The views expressed on life science today are those of the host and guests. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any organizations with which they are affiliated. The biotech IPO and SPAC bonanza of 2020 and 2021 was bound to have some organizations that could have been more conscientiously vetted. The once unicorn Zymergen has been on a journey that's anything but rainbows. The biotech raised more than $1 billion in private capital and then a $500 million IPO with a $3 billion valuation that eventually peaked in $5 billion in market value and amazing claims about how they would transform the way science is done. But by late summer last year, it emerged that the company had no meaningful pipeline of revenue and no real prospects of justifying the capital invested or valuation. This should not be shunted off on the shoulders of a few greedy business leaders, though the CEO did fall on his sword. But that's a CEO's job, and the company was backed by big names like SoftBank, who should have known better. Last week, the next chapter unfolded as they cut 80 more jobs and announced a planned $300 million acquisition by the emergent biotech Ginkgo Bioworks. Now, Both of these biotech organizations sit in a much broader area of biotechnology than simply health innovations, including work in agricultural innovations and Zymergen's folding phone screen technology and more. For Ginkgo, the deal pulls Zymergen's processes and capital assets into existing work streams, which will expand Ginkgo's technical capabilities. Ginkgo themselves is no stranger to litigious circumstances and stocks falling from grace, being down 80% from their peak and have faced down their own resistance from efforts to short their stocks by questioning the stability of their own revenue streams. Despite these challenges, Ginkgo continues to forge ahead with this acquisition and burgeoning partnerships in agriculture, beauty products, and viral testing. Much could be said about the cost of innovation and the market circumstances Zymergen entered in compared to the ones they're exiting on. But at the end of the day, Zymergen is currently a case study in just how rapidly biotechs can turn $1.5 billion into $300 million. In cases like Zymergen, it's unlikely anyone will ever be held accountable. Sure, it's possible we'll see some lawsuits, but this exit may be the last piece of the story. But for other biotech startups, the consequences can come home much more directly. This may be the case for Cassava Sciences, who is currently under investigation by the Department of Justice for potential scientific fraud, or to be more specific, using fraudulent science to defraud investors. I want to contrast this from the Zymergen example. Zymergen is more than likely the failure of multiple systems. At least looking from the outside, investors, leaders, product issues all collided with real delivery challenges to create their downfall. Cassava is a very different story. Cassava's core product, Simulfilm, that targets Alzheimer's, is based on the work of Dr. Lindsay Burns and scientific advisor Dr. Hao Yan Wang. But over the last year, a number of independent sources have revealed likely fraudulent work, particularly by Dr. Wang. To make it simple, both the basic scientific evidence supporting the theory behind Simulfilm and the direct evidence supporting the therapy show signs of being tampered with. Now, cassava's not dead in the water yet, and the jury's still out on if real fraud occurred here. Plus, some of the allegations are coming from those trying to short cassava's stock, so certainly a vested interest. But if fraud did occur, you can absolutely expect significant fallout. I think it's worth noting that in cases of scientific fraud, a group of very few players is often responsible. A couple of scientists with questionable ethics and a willingness to convince others of their pet theories using contrived data. But if they ever do meaningful research, they're often eventually caught. And that's because science is basically a self-regulating group. Scientists are usually the ones calling out scientists. So in the case of Zymergen, you have a system failure costing investors at least $1.2 billion. 
but to date, there are limited legal ramifications. But when cassava has alleged direct scientific fraud-driven failure, then legal investigations are quick to follow. Perhaps it bears thinking about the ways we are far better at individual rather than systemic accountability. In our final story of fraud and failure in the life sciences, we look at Teva, the Israeli pharmaceutical company most known for the creation of a number of generic opioids, but who has a wide range of additional generics on the market. During their earnings report this quarter, they announced a plan to settle all outstanding opioid-related lawsuits in a $5 billion, 13-year fell swoop. The plan includes $3.7 billion in payouts for various lawsuits and the provision of $1.2 billion worth of the generic opioid overdose medication, naloxone hydrochloride nasal spray. Whether a settlement this sweeping will be approved and absolve a company of its legal culpability is yet to be seen, but it appears to be the only feasible mechanism of collective responsibility. In other instances, companies like Purdue Pharma converted to nonprofit entities to sequester those that made the money from ongoing legal ramifications. And indeed, how do you hold a medical system accountable for the rippling impact of misuse and abuse? In Teva's case, they have major lawsuit losses, including a $1.5 billion loss in the state of New York and several million dollar losses across the South. And they're currently appealing some of these cases. To resolve this ongoing challenge, they're asking if $5 billion would be enough to get them out of this legal purgatory. Thanks for joining me for Life Science Today, your source for stories, insights, and trends across the life science industry. Learn more on lifesciencetodaypodcast.com. And if you like what you hear, please tell a friend. Once again, I'm Dr. Noah Goodson. I'll see you next week. Thank you.